Hello and welcome to episode three of series five of the Engaging Internal Comms podcast. This is the show for employee engagers and internal communicators who like to keep up to date with all that is new in our profession. My name's Craig Smith from The Big Picture People. Welcome to this third episode. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we've got coming up in the next couple of episodes. So on the 13th of February, I have an interview with JJ Brunn. JJ is a retired spy, worked in counterintelligence and espionage for the Canadian military. And he's going to be giving us all of the lessons that he learned about communications in his time in espionage. And now that he is applying to the business world. So I think you'll find that a really fascinating interview and an insight into an area that many of us know little about. Then we have a bonus episode for you on the 20th. So we normally have a fortnightly show, as you know, but this is a bonus episode that we're going to be putting out on the 20th of February for you. And it's actually a full episode from our friends at Infernal Communication, which is a podcast run by Staffbase. And that episode will be telling you all about uh, the, the hero's journey. As you probably know, storytelling, is a lot of stories are based around the hero's journey story and they're going to be doing some myth busting around that so an excellent podcast full episode that we're just going to be putting out and re reissuing on their behalf and uh, to give you a, a exposure to another excellent internal communications podcast that's the infernal not internal infernal with an f communication podcast and then our next normal episode is the week after that which is on the 27th of february and that is an interview with michelle gimia michelle is going to be telling us all about the importance of uh, pay and communication so it's an area we've not covered before Uh, michelle's specialism is in the pay gap and the how organizations can deal with the pay gap and a large part of that is their internal communications so fascinating interview a fascinating topic as I say, something we've not covered before explicitly on the show, purely looking at pay and remuneration and where there is a perceived gap within your organisation and the role that internal communications plays in that. So that's all we've got coming up. We've got three weeks of episodes for you coming up after the uh, the, the next one on the 13th for your, for your enjoyment and listening pleasure. So let's get into this episode's interview. <laughs> Something that is of increasing importance to organisations is their social purpose. At the moment, many of the employees coming into the job market or employees already with organisations are looking for organisations that have a strong social purpose as somewhere where they want to be employed and to work. So I wanted to cover off some of the challenges of communicating social purpose and involving and engaging employees in the social purpose of the organization. So what we're going to do in this episode is explore a little bit more about what social purpose is within an organization that has a really, really strong sense of social purpose. And we're going to look at how the social purpose manifests itself within the organization. What are some of the business benefits of having a strong social purpose and communicating that to your employees, but also practically how can you live that social purpose? How can you bring that social purpose to life and make it something that people actually see as part of your organization and that you're authentic to that social purpose as well? We're also going to look at some of the generational differences that exist within the job market at the moment. There's a clear belief that younger people coming into the job market at the moment are the ones who are more strongly driven by social purpose. But what we'll explore is that that is actually any generation, all generations are looking at the moment to work for organisations and work within organisations and also partner with organisations that have a strong sense of social purpose. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this episode. How do we build and develop our social purpose within an organization? How do we communicate that? And how do we make sure that our culture is fully aligned with our social purpose? My guest today is Christine Cook. Christine is leading on the internal communications at the independent global charity Lloyd's Register Foundation, as well as the social purpose work of the Lloyd's Register across the globe worldwide. 
Her work includes strategy building, multi-channel campaigns for global audience, as well as promotion of key projects and initiatives covering worldwide charitable work, decarbonization and sustainability, as well as safety, all of which has the goal to make the world a safer and more sustainable place. So hello, Christine, how are you? Hello, I'm really well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And just for our listeners, whereabouts in the world are you? Where where are you based at the moment? Oh, well, I'm lucky enough to be based in sunny South Dorset, right on the coast. Fantastic. So that's in, in the UK. So South Dorset, right on the the uh, English Channel, is that? It is the English Channel, isn't it? The nearest yeah. sea to you. Yeah. yeah. Lovely Fantastic. part of the world. Recommend it to all listeners. It is. Yeah, it is a very nice part of the world. So anyway, I've given a brief introduction to your, your work there at Lloyd's Register, Christine, which sounds fascinating. So do you just want to tell us a little bit more about, about that work and also what, what you've done previously to, to be prior to joining uh, Lloyd's Register? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, it's been a windy road um, to internal communications, but it's one I've, I've definitely enjoyed. Um, so I started my career actually in paid social media advertising. Mm. Um, and then I moved on to more kind of communications focused roles, and that was both internal and external. Um, but I have to say, I definitely got the good bug when I started working for Crowdfunder, which is a fundraising platform, and mm. they work with incredible partners to give out matched funding. Mm. Um, so really interestingly, I worked on the NatWest Group Back Her Business program, um, which helped mm. get match funding to female-led startups um, and other partners, including Sport England, Sport Wales, Sport Northern Ireland, local enterprise partnerships, local authorities, um, and even the Seaspiracy team, which was a, a really interesting project. Mm. Um, and in that role, I had a huge focus on kind of campaign strategy and digital marketing and internal comms consultancy. Um, but what was really important for me was I felt that crowdfunders work really aligned to my personal values. So when I was looking for my next role, specifically in internal comms, I knew it needed to be a company that was making real change in the world, a real kind of tangible difference. Uh, and because of that, I was really pleased to find Lloyd's Register, um, whose mm. sole shareholder is Lloyd's Register Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess, I mean, my, my from my ignorance, I'm aware of Lloyd's Register, which I believe is to do with insurance and shipping. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so it's the, the world's first um, marine classification society. Um, but, mm. but these days, it's a global professional services company and they specialize mm. in engineering and technology um, for the maritime industry. Okay. And Lloyd's Register Foundation is obviously is, is obviously part of that. But, but how, what's the relationship between the, the foundation and, and Lloyd's Register itself then? It's really unique. It's a structure that we tend to see more in Scandinavia, more than I think we see in the UK. Mm. Um, but the foundation is a registered charity um, mm. and it's this, the only shareholder of Lloyd's Register Group. Mm. Um, but the connection is, is that both work together on initiatives um, for the benefit of society. So an example of that could be the Maritime Decarbonisation Hub. Mm. And that focuses on creating safe, sustainable pathways to a zero carbon maritime industry they work together just in very different ways okay i see the fit now so it makes sense yeah excellent so so you you kind of stated quite clearly there that you know when you when you um left crowdfunder you were looking for somewhere that, that really fitted your own personal values and passions as well so 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 maybe maybe a little bit of, from a personal situation or personal story where 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 that comes from from you know your own personal um passion for, for for doing good and for social purpose as well yeah of course um I, I'm sure it's the same for you for conversations that we've had already mm. um but f for me in my work I I really need to get up in the morning and feel really proud about what I do and I know that you had um Dr Graham Ward uh, on your podcast talking about Ikigai and I, I really urge everyone listening to learn more about that concept um, mm. and pursue mm. it if they can yeah um for those listening that might not have heard um there's no direct English translation, um, but it's a term that embodies the idea of, of happiness in living. Mm. Um, so essentially, Ikigai is, is the reason why you get up in the morning. Um, for those in the West, um, you might be more familiar with the concept of Ikigai. It's often associated with a Venn diagram, yeah. and it has four overlapping qualities, um, what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. Um, and there's, yeah. there's more to it than that, and more about what it means for Japanese people, as it's a Japanese concept. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So absolutely fascinating. Um, please do find out more. Um, but for me, mm. that, that's really resonated with me um, mm. in, in my career as well. 
Mm. Yeah, no, I think I think it's great. I mean, I, we we've covered it a lot on the show about you know kind of more as a you know as a as a sort of postulating that people now want more purpose in their work and and mm. that, that that's a really important part of it but, but i think you know you you've articulated there perfectly from your position that there, <laughs> there are there for there those four elements need to come together and there are many you, you know i think i think that's one way of looking at it you know um people like uh i think it's dan pink talk about autonomy mastery and purpose you know being really important but i mean that thing about purpose i think is really key at the moment and i think it always has been but i think you know in the past purpose has been maybe you know kind of more self uh centered perhaps uh, less altruistic whereas i think now people's purpose is much more around social and and an environmental responsibility and and i think that's really good so so it's really refreshing to hear someone talking about that from a from a Thank personal you. situation rather than we think gen x or gen z or mm. gen whatever want 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 x y or z so yeah so yeah yeah um so obviously there's there's that fit there for you within your organization um i mean what what are some of the things that that you know i, I guess again you know looking at it from a personal perspective but also from an organizational organizational perspective what are what are the things that you're really passionate about helping fix at the minute and seeing your organization as a conduit for that so either it's social or environmental or or whatever what are your kind of big purpose driven things that dr- drive your your life at the moment if you don't mind sharing them with us christine of course. I mean, a huge worry for me, and I know so many others, um, is climate change. Mm. Um, I can see the impact it's having around the world, but working for a global company, I can see the impact it's having on my colleagues. Mm. Um, so thinking especially of the fires and the floods in Greece as a recent example, mm. um, just to see it impacting people's lives, I, it makes me just think, I think companies have a responsibility to be good corporate citizens. Mm. Um, you know, There's only so much charities and smaller not-for-profits and smaller businesses can do. Mm. We need the backing and the commitment of these large corporations mm. to make a big difference. There's so much businesses can do. Mm. Um, and we're seeing that, that customers um, are behind them. Mm. Um, and of course, change is so uncomfortable in the, in the small term. A great example of just of small changes that we keep talking about um, are, you know, you cross your arms one way and mm-hmm. that feels very normal to cross your arms the other way, take some, some getting used to. So, mm. um, but from, from a personal point of view, I mean, I, I like the analogy that our house is burning. Mm. Um, so for me, now's not the time to sit, sit in boardrooms and discuss. It's, it's mm. time to take Get action. Mm. Li- exactly. Listen to what's going on in the world. Mm. Um, and then for businesses, it's responding in a way that's relevant to your business. So communications is my absolute passion. It's something mm. I love to do. Mm. Um, and to be able to lend that skill to something as important as communicating the changes that happen in the climate um, is something that is both fulfilling, but I, I do think is also incredibly important. Mm, definitely and that's a great great segue and what i want to talk about really for the, for the bulk of, the, of our conversation christine which is about that you know the how the internal comms aspects of this so so what are what are some of the things that you can share with us now that you're you're currently involved in from a comms perspective and and again that connection to you know purpose um and what lloyd's Roy, the lloyd's register foundation is, is doing at the moment and trying to do Absolutely. I mean, there's always going to be sharing great stories, sharing inspiring stories, trying to create the best content that you can um, with your audience in mind. Um, But right now we're working on a campaign to relaunch a global volunteering program. um, And that works on getting funding and volunteering days supported by the Lloyd's Register Foundation in support of a charity or a not-for-profit that's working to make the world a safer place. Mm. Um, and so colleagues can actually choose through, a, of course, a rigorous governance process to make sure that everything is approved as it needs mm. to be, mm. um, to work with organizations that are close to them. Mm. And for me, and it's something we've touched on a moment ago, by giving our people the chance to work with charities or not-for-profits that are important to them, we're helping them to align their values mm. and their expertise with something that the foundation can support. Mm. Um, And I know many organizations have a kind of CSR model, but I think it's just a brilliant way to engage employees directly Mm. in the social purpose and the values of an organization. Mm. How, how, I should have asked this at the beginning, Christine, how many people work for the organization just, just to get an idea of scale? 
Uh, so for Lloyd's Register, it'd be around 4,000. And then mm. for, uh, sorry, for the Lloyd's Register group, it's around 4,000. And for the mm. foundation, it's only around 50 people. Okay. And so are you, are you looking, is the foundation working with the 4,000 across the business to, to sort of help them and, and facilitate that, 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 that volunteering across that group? Or is it just within the 50 that you're looking at? So it's within the wider group, so within the yeah. 4,000 people. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. No, I, th- I thought it probably was, so just to clarify that. Okay, no, that's, that sounds fantastic. So so what are some of the things you're doing to, I guess, there's there's multiple aspects to that. There's there's, 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 there's the kind of raising awareness, there's getting people involved, there's, there's, there's the kind of helping people to see that this is something that you can get involved in. What what are some of the things you're doing to communicate that at the moment and what, what, have, been, what have been some of the more successful ways of getting that out there and getting people interested in this or or, or are probably it's probably not a case of interested but it's being being aware that this is something you can do it's it's something for everybody yeah absolutely and i think with communicating anything to do with social purpose um i'm always really hyper aware that there needs to be this appropriate balance with business as usual communications commercial messaging um and there should always be a reason for writing and disseminating something to a business. Um, mm. I'm a firm believer that good news for good news' sake, it really waters down the message and the value that you place behind it. Mm. So um, what, is, what has worked and what we know as, as good communicators is remember your audience, remember the channels that work best for your organization, um, mm. write in a way that's relevant to them. Um, so we have a lot of really brilliant technical people, so they don't have a lot of time to go through long content. We need to get the information over to them quickly in a succinct and engaging way. Um, and write in plain English, you know, we work for a global organization, many people, um, incredibly, especially from a, you know, from, from a UK point of view Mm. are working day to day in a second language. Um, so plain English or your business language is so integral. Don't, don't get caught up in jargon or flowery language it's not Mm. something that's ever going to land um but for me what i've seen that works the best is just telling a story tell Mm. people about the difference being made and if you can either put people at the center of those stories or have them tell the stories Mm. um and as communicators we know this we know all of this Mm. when it comes to commercial messaging um and we just we shouldn't forget that when we have a good story, it won't just sell itself because mm. it's a good story. We mm. need to keep applying those same internal communications best practice when we're mm. talking about social purpose work. Mm. Absolutely. What what channels have you found really work work for those sort of messages? What do you? I know commun- internal communicators also always love to have a nosy and find out what other people <laughs> are using. So, what what sort of channels do you you use, and have you found most successful? So we have a few. Um, mm. We're seeing that video as content is working really well. I think mm-hmm. that really reflects what's happening in external communications as well, what we're seeing on social media. Um, but much in the same way that the internal communications often reflect what's going on in external communications, we're seeing that shorter videos in the same way that externally we're seeing reels, shorts, TikToks are being really popular. I know that our um, attention spans are perhaps taking a short dive because of that. Hmm. Um, but we're really seeing that any videos over the two minute mark are really starting to drop off. And I know hmm. that's being reflected in um, external research as well. Hmm. Um, we do have an internal newsletter, which has an incredibly high open rate, which is great to see. And that's across the board, across the board globally. And what that newsletter offers is a summary of everything that's happening that week in the business. And that spans everything from commercial messaging to social purpose messaging to people stories. So we can post the information on our internal intranet or using Viva Engage, mm. um, which is the new name for Yammer for those um, who yeah. might not have come across that name just yet. Um, but we're finding that in in classic marketing communications, you have to show people the information seven times before it, before mm. it fits. So mm. for us, we've got lots of different people in the business who are doing lots of different jobs. And so for us, it's about making sure that there are touch points in every relevant person's role that mean that they can access that same bit of information, Mm, but mm. making sure that that communication in itself is relevant to that global audience. Mm. What what sort of um, roles do people have in terms of, and not, you know, specific like job descriptions, but in terms of people tend to be desk-based? Have you got people who are kind of traveling around all the time or is it a mixture of, of, of both? 
It's a mixture. About a third of Lloyd's Register is, um, as I've said, are brilliant technical people. Yeah. But we could have, we do have a mix of field based and also um, desk based people. So we've got right. our our kind of central functions teams, mm. as most big organisations do. But we've also got our um, our surveyors who are physically out on mm. ships. Mm. Um, we've also got what we call um, a TSO team, which in it, it, and I won't go into the jargon, but in itself, they they go through the plans and the kind of naval architecture to make sure that things are all stamped and okay and ready to go and approved. Yeah. Um, but we have commercial teams, of course. I mean, we, do, we have this massive organization, but yeah, we yeah. absolutely have um, field-based and technical yeah. and um, desk-based people too. Really diverse then and, and and with all the challenges that that brings with it in terms of, you know, kind of how people consume their information when, when they've got those differences of how they work and where they work and their kind of shift their working patterns as well, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. it's not the same, but, you know, we often think of um, – retail organizations mm. who have mm. shops and yeah. you know that people aren't behind a computer because their role is yeah. not sat behind a, a computer all day so it presents an interesting um communications challenge but also i mean for everyone at the moment time people are busy we've got, they've got kpis to hit you know absolutely yeah. mouths to feed bills to pay and we're up against the cost of living crisis mm. um so for me it's important whoever i'm talking to that if i'm asking someone to take time away from what makes them money mm. the content i deliver has to be really has good to add value yeah 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 definitely definitely no and then we've covered the deskless um worker thing quite a few times because it's it's something yeah. i've a lot of experience with myself because i know it, it, it is a it is a um we, we're heavily reliant obviously on on technology to to do that a lot of that heavy lifting with people are working remotely and and uh yeah yeah so uh, i, I want to move on just just to talk about uh, the perennial question that again in in terms of in addition to channels which is measurement so yes I, I guess for an organization like yours which has social purpose at the core of what you do there is a as a natural fit there mm. um, well, I mean I'm making that assumption I, I mean in terms of just thinking around you know how how we show the, the good good social purpose is good business it, 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 i mean from your perspective it, it, that you know is that a challenge but also for businesses maybe where there is less of that kind of yeah. connection between what they do and social uh, having a, a clearly clearly defined social purpose what are your thoughts around that that christine around showing that real kind of business benefit and it's not just about making lots of money it's about you know doing good in the world as well Absolutely. It's something I'm really passionate about. So I'm always happy to talk about it. Um, <laughs> but there, there is such a strong connection between business, business success and social purpose. So um, first and foremost, as, as, in, as internal communicators, we should all be passionate about this, which is employee engagement, um, but also employee retention. So a 2020 Deloitte survey um, showed that 53% of millennials and 38%, interestingly, of Gen Z respondents said they'd chosen a job because the company had a strong purpose, a strong mm. social purpose, and 76% of employees consider a company's social purpose and environmental commitments when deciding where to work. And that's from Cone mm. Communications Global CSR study. So they, they're big numbers. This is this is what people are looking for when they're looking to new jobs and looking to new companies. Um, but it's not just our employees. It's also about building reputation and trust with our customers, with our partners, mm. with prospective employees. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to go too stat heavy, um, but a 2020 survey by Edelman showed that 64% of consumers around the world buy on the belief that a brand shares their values. Mm. That's an incredible number. That's over half of your customers are looking for you to have a social purpose before they make a purchase. Really, really interesting. Mm. Um I know McKinsey's come out with stats as well to show that organizations who have a strong social purpose, they tend to outperform their peers. Mm. So we're starting to see from these numbers, okay, having a social purpose, it's important for the world. It's important because we, we're we looking after the world that we all live in. But there is this really strong commercial benefit of having one as well. Mm. Mm. And not even just on the money Um you know, we're looking at kind of risk mitigation. Companies that have a clear social purpose are better prepared to deal with risks because they understand what's happening in the world. Yeah. Um, so really interesting and the regulations that are coming in might shift this, but yeah. um, there's definitely a connection here. 
definitely no and I, and you know building on that I, de- I agree with you i mean i think um you know as a as a, as a small SME, micro SME, we'd be really classed as who works with a lot of bigger, bigger organizations. For, for me, uh, it's not just about whether they're willing to pay us. It's actually, do I, do we want to be associated with them as well? Yeah. So I think really supply chains is really important as well. And, 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 and I think it's not just a, it, you know, it is, it is a moral choice, but it's also usually companies when you work with them that don't have that sense of purpose or you know they're not that pleasant to work with if I'm very <laughs> honest and and you know it, it it manifests itself in other ways other than in in and in, in terms of you know they don't pay you on time and they don't respect the fact that you're a, you know they don't treat you as a as a kind of a a partner they treat you as just a pair of hands and and, and it's really weird to it's, it's, it's only it's after odd. years of doing you know working like in this way running a running a small business that you start to sort of see that that it's not just it's not just sort of window dressing, you know, it's actually the core to their culture and the way they, they see that, you know, that are we a big company who can just boss, you know, little, little companies like yours around, or do we actually treat you yeah. with respect? And, and so, you know, it, it, it's really kind of endemic, I think. And when a company has that sort of strong sense of purpose, it's not just, you know, in kind of, in terms of that social purpose, it's also, they're just, nice people to work with and it's a nice organization to work with and that that you know you kind of enjoy working with them so yeah it's it's really interesting that you say that because you know i've not worked i've not worked in the i've not the employment market mm. for a long time but i think it, it, it it's 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 holistic looking at holistically i think it's another factor as well so absolutely and you've touched mm. on something so important there which mm. is authenticity mm. you know mm. lip service and greenwashing is something yeah. to be avoided if you, if you <laughs> yeah. cannot follow through on your social purpose yeah. please do not boast about having one um yeah it is the quickest way to turn off employees and customers. absolutely absolutely and it's not that hard to, to to find out that that is just the case as well it's yeah. like <laughs> it's like you know kind of you it's like walls that are made out of, of a very thin plasterboard you sort mm. of put, put your finger on it and immediately you sort of your finger goes straight through it and you kind of know that this isn't this isn't you know this is just just the surface is there's nothing up underneath it at all so yeah yeah absolutely absolutely, absolutely. um just just in terms of i can't we've i think we've, i don't know whether, uh, this is one of the questions that i'd, I'd, I'd put in our our kind of planet of questions around what obstacles the organization it sounds like that you know within your organization anyway that they're on you know there's a natural fit there for, for social purpose but for an organization that's that's maybe you know looking to do do more social purpose and as we've said it's not as superficial as just window dressing you know what, what mm. are some of the things that um you know you would recommend you you know you've kind of immersed in this for so long now uh, it, it sometimes it's difficult to step back and think say okay if i if i was helping someone who didn't you know was trying to develop their social purpose or didn't really know what it was but they're kind of basically trying to discover it what what, what would you recommend in terms of how organizations can do that but also what are some of the challenges and obstacles they may face in in terms of of, of articulating or finding their own social purpose it's a brilliant brilliant question because i think often people think that they cannot be commercially focused and have a social purpose mm. um a great example of that is lego um mm. you know in 2018 they've launched plant-based bricks um mm-hmm. they're looking to have no waste by 2025 um mm. and that's not an organization that you would go oh that if i'm gonna i'm not it's not patagonia it's not lush it's not mm. you know osprey you know these these companies that have social purpose built into their dna um these are big commercial operate operate operations we've got ben and jerry's um they're looking um to grow the number of black owned and black led supplies that they use every mm. year mm. um you know we've got you know, we've got drastic measures like patagonia who are looking who've just completely transferred the company to a trust and not for profit mm. um mm. but we've also got organizations like greg's in the greg's yeah. foundation which is absolutely mm. brilliant and i've got a contact over at greg's and we meet regularly and the work that she tells me they're doing just makes me think there is room for social purpose, no matter your business. Um, and I would say the challenges that you will come up against, and they are challenges that I think you will enjoy overcoming. Um, one of them will always be leadership commitment. So make sure mm. there's a strategy that's being led from the top. But as well as that, make sure there is always a feedback loop from everyone in the business because Mm. a social purpose should be felt and valued by all of your um, employees. And as I've touched on before, 
you need to make sure that your social purpose is integrated and relevant to your business. So all of your goals and all of your objectives and outcomes know what you can affect. So Mm. for example, Lego aren't going to be a mover and shaker in sustainable activewear. We know that they're not going to be. Mm. That's not what the business does. Mm. They've Mm. understood what they can do and they're making strides in that area. Mm. Um, And find ways for people to engage. I mean, we could talk until the cows come home about great stories and inspiring stories and stir people up um, and get them ready to take action. Um, Mm. But that's like trying to tell the world that you're a great company and then Mm. not giving anyone the chance to buy any of your products. Mm. Give people ways to engage directly with your social purpose. Um, But try and weave that messaging into the fabric of your communication. So as as I said, social purpose doesn't need to necessarily stand alone. It can be part of your business, part of Mm. your commercial strategy, part of the way that you talk to your customers. Um, even down to the part of the way that you present the about us sections on your internal platforms mm. or your website, mm. help social purpose to define who you are in your communications. Um, and you'll see the difference. But more importantly than that, measure your approach, see what's working as a communicator and adapt. The industry mm. with AI, with all of our new platforms is changing as quickly as the world that we live in. Um, mm. and, and I think it's our job as internal communicators to keep up with that when we're telling these great stories Mm, fantastic fantastic yeah i think ai i mean we won't we won't go down that rabbit hole but i know there's been a lot around it in the media recently and i've I've been to a few conferences where ai has been you know very very high on the agenda of what people are talking about and i think it's a really interesting area i was listening to something yesterday that was saying that you know um i think actually it was um it was there was some speech that British Prime Minister was doing, talking about you know the, all the good things that AI can do, but then also all the, yeah. the dangers of AI, and and you just kind of think oh, human history is yeah. with, you know kind of we we do do we go down the kind of the, you know the nice route or do we go down the kind of you know perilous route, and we often you know to kind of just stumble into you, you know the kind of things that we really wanted to avoid I, I do you know AI, AI I think is phenomenal but I also mm. think it, it, it the way the nature of it and, and the kind of almost the um you know the kind of the way that it, it sort of almost has its own momentum of, of building itself up and 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 the way people are using it it, it does I think it's going to be really interesting and you know um I think for, for your for the your generation and 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 the generations that follow, it's going to be one of those really interesting things to see how it pans out. And and I'm kind of hoping it all it, it does all the good things that they think mm. it can do, and and not not necessarily all of the bad. But yeah, I mean, totally. what are you what what are your thoughts on it? I mean, I say we're not going to go down the rabbit hole of AI, <laughs> but but I mean, you, what, what, how do you see it being used? Are you using it? And and what are your sort of hopes and fears? I guess with AI. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely using it. Um, I think it's a great tool. I know that um, Microsoft has have invested in AI, and they mm. will be coming out with more AI tools. Mm. Um, I know they're coming out with a tool called Copilot, which is going to be a kind of copy AI system. Mm. Um, in terms of my thoughts about it, so I I think two main things. One is with AI, you get out what you put in. Mm. So without great content that you're putting into these systems and you're feeding that system to generate good content, that content still needs to be top quality. It still needs to be written really well. It still needs to be clearly structured. It still needs to have the audience in mind. You have to feed it all of this information for it to generate something. Mm. Um, And that's great because that's just an adaptation of our roles now. I mean, email didn't exist a while ago. Mm. Social media didn't exist a while ago. Um, Viva Engage didn't exist a while ago. As internal communicators, we've dealt with this changing industry. Mm. Mm. And so I think we should be excited by the possibilities that AI offers and the admin tasks that it will take off of our plate. Mm. My, not, not so much a concern, but something I think we should all keep in mind is that companies internally and externally pride themselves on a really clear tone of voice a really clear message really clear set of values i think we need to be careful that we don't end up all sounding the same yeah because yeah. sometimes perfect content isn't the right content sometimes yeah. raw authentic from the heart people story content will win every time 
mm. over a perfectly constructed article that is exactly mm. the right length with exactly the perfect title. Um, and so I would just say, let's use it for everything it has. Let's respect it as, as a, and give it a place in our industry. Mm. Let's not fear it. It won't take our jobs away. Our jobs will just adapt in line with, with a changing world. Um, mm. And, and let's just see where it takes us. Let's be excited about the challenges. Let's create great AI imagery and use that to supplement some of our communications. Let's mm. tell great people stories and just be able to plug those stories into a video generator that gives us our intro and outro and our nice icons. Let's mm. work on the story that we're telling rather than the admin rigmarole of yeah. actually creating that video in the first place. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm excited by the possibilities, but I am... Um, I think I've got a healthy caution uh, towards yeah. not just letting it generate the same content each time. Yeah, yeah, and I think it—I think it'll raise some interesting dilemmas around, you know, what we've been talking about in the bulk of the interview around social purpose as well. Is is, is you know, I know it's not a, you know, AI is a, is not a, 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 a sentient. Uh, breathing thinking thing but the way we use it to you know drive our purpose and and social good or do we use it as a way of you know kind of uh of, of replacing you know labor or and 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 also as you say you know kind of using it as a way of um potentially uh creating content or 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 external or internal content that that is, is actually you know kind of just mush and 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 that's just been sourced from everywhere that ai can find that information yeah. from as well you know i think it does raise some interesting moral dilemmas as well as as technical and and mm. and you and know the sort of, accuracy of it as well absolutely always good, yeah, always yeah, good to check yeah absolutely I mean, there's been a lot of research done around the fact that it because it learns from itself that if you propagate false information into it that it will just continue to propagate more and more false information so it, you know it, as you say garbage in garbage out it's it's, exactly. it's no difference to any any other technology in that respect look christine that's been absolutely fantastic conversation um and and you know we've covered some really important points there and i really i, I love uh, it's been great hearing about not only your organization and, and how that's driving a real kind of so, strong sense of of purpose and and that, that's behind everything you do but but lovely to f hear your personal story about how you found you know your home you know for career wise in terms mm. of somewhere where you can really amplify your own uh, passion for, for doing good things uh uh, through an organization that that, that, that is ch channeling that for you so that's absolutely fantastic just before we wrap up just just be any 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 final thoughts or comments before we uh before we close out i would just say from my point of view i think there's a, a perception perhaps that gen z is the generation that's pushing this hmm. um and perhaps we can expect this generation to be more vocal about it um but i would just say to everyone i think in reality it's something that most people in the workforce are committed to. Yeah. Um, those entering the workforce want to be part of that change. Um, those with experience want to lend their expertise to it. Um, and perhaps those who are uh, perhaps retiring or have children entering the workforce, they want mm. to leave it in a better place than they mm. than they found it. Mm. So I think uh, you know we as communicators have a responsibility to learn from that experience and make sure that what we're saying is factually correct um, and relevant. But we need the passion of young people and I think we're all excited by that, but we mm. need that experience and we need that leadership commitment. So mm. my final ask would be everyone has a place um, in making a company's social purpose more meaningful, regardless of age, everyone's voice is important. So remember that it's your guiding star. Remember it's a journey and um, that presents an interesting and exciting challenge for us as communicators. You know, we're speaking to a multi-generational mm. and sometimes global workforce, um, but I think it's one that really cares. Mm, absolutely yeah yeah i hear here and well said i mean as a gen xer i would say you, you're definitely right there i mean it may not be the you know when you were talking mm. earlier about the research maybe a smaller percentage you were driven by doing that but i think you know m my generation sound like a really old uh, <laughs> old man now but but my generation you know we do want to we do we do we do you know, i'm speaking on behalf of a generation and how you know obviously i'm not the spokesperson for gen x but but i think a lot of us you know a lot of my friends and, and network and and colleagues and family of my age do want you know we do want we don't want to see the 
things destroyed. We're not, we're not kind of like, well, we've done with it now. We don't care. Um, you know, so, so I think it definitely, and I think, well, you know, like you say, we, we can maybe help shape that and, and, and use some of our wisdom and world experience perhaps to sort of, to, to make that more effective than that, that, you know, definitely it's not just a a new, you know, for the modern new generations. I've been, it's been worrying me for a long time now about what we do to this planet and a lot of other people feel the same. So yeah, absolutely. Well, look, uh, w- really great to speak to you Christine thank you so much and I know thank it was a you. kind of a um you know we kind of met on LinkedIn and, and you we reached did. out to me and we kind of like you know I sent you a note just to say that uh, it'd be, be great to get you on the show and and it's great to hear someone working in an organization like yours about what you're doing and and, and the great work that you're doing so if people want to um connect up with you find out I'm, I'm going to put your LinkedIn profile into the show notes if if that's okay Christine is that is that okay with you yeah yeah, yeah any other ways that you you want to get people people to reach out to you or is it or is LinkedIn the best way to do that? I would say LinkedIn is is the best way, but just right. a thank you to you as well. Thank you for having me on. I've, I love your podcast um, and you. I look forward to hearing this and, and all of the others as they come out. Yeah, thank you. And and again, uh, thank you for that. I really appreciate that, Christine. And again, I, I I say this on every episode as a sort of a, you know, my, a standard request, but, you know, I do, I, it is great to get people like yourself. We get a great, great diverse range of guests and, and to have someone who's actually in an organization, you know, doing the do and particularly in, in an area of like social purpose or, or many, many of the other fantastic um, uh, areas and of involvement that, that we get as internal communicators. But it's lovely to hear, hear your voice as well and thank you so much for for giving up your time and uh and and, and all the best for 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 the work that you're doing at lloyd's register foundation christine thank you thank you very much thank you christine bye-bye we hope you've enjoyed this episode of the engaging internal comms podcast if you've got any ideas for episodes you'd like us to cover in future you can email us at info at the big or you can use the feedback form at engagingic.com if you're not already subscribed to the show via your podcast platform please do so and if you could leave a review for us that would be absolutely fantastic we have links to other episodes at engagingic.com all of our previous episodes are available there and if you're interested in our visual communication services, our big pictures, our learning maps, our explainer videos, and also our live graphic recording, please get in touch with us again at info at thebigpicturepeople.co.uk. Thank you.